G'day. This is part three of a three-part series. It's all about 101 different things that are important to take on a long trip around Australia. Now, I probably haven't covered half of them, and in fact, there's probably 1,001. But hopefully, this will give you a bit of an idea. For all the things I've missed, please feel free to make a comment down the bottom here if you've got enough room and enough time to add all the extra comments. Anywho, let's go. Now hopefully I'll get through these fairly quick. I could just rush through them very quickly, but uh, sometimes I need a little message. So here's uh, two thermometers. This one I actually keep in the fridge. So, uh, do I know? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so there's this one, this is the fridge thermometer. Now this comes with another little doodad. It doesn't even look like a thermometer. That sits in the fridge. And then out of the fridge will tell me how cold it is in the fridge and how cold it is in the van. And just because I like to know these sort of things, I've also got one which has Velcro on it. It sits just above the kitchen sink. Just tells me the temperature in the van. So if I'm really, really hot, I know why. <laughs> okay. Um, these are little sugar packets. Now, I quite like these because if someone comes over, I don't tend to have sugar with any of my stuff. And if someone comes over, they want a coffee or a tea, and they say, do you have sugar? Oh, I had these little throwaway ones. So it's handy to have that. Here's an egg timer. It's more than an egg timer. Now, what I've used this for the whole trip is sometimes I'll drive for an hour, then have a break, another hour, have a break. And if it all gets too much, I think, you know what, I'm just going to pull over and have a snooze. I'll set this to uh, either 10 minutes or 15 minutes, set my mind to its own alarm clock, and then hopefully my alarm clock in my head will go off before this. If not, this will go off and I've had a quick power nap, bit of a refresh, and then back on the road. So that could be really handy. Tape measure, well, that's obvious, but keep in mind, there's sometimes when, if you're at a garage or when you're getting things done or you get an old-fashioned person who doesn't know the difference, this one's got inches and millimetres and centimetres, so it's probably a good idea to have one of those. Also not a bad idea to have one of those real long five-metre or seven-metre ones as well. Velcro, this is not a very good example of it, but uh, get yourself a roll of um, Velcro. You get, the, uh, you get the top and the bottom. I can't remember what they're called. <laughs> name across the bottom but you get the uh, loops I think they're called a loop and a hoop and you put the two together so you can stick things on the wall and stick things on the cupboard and it's a great uh, great way I've got a few things stuck around the uh, van like that clothes pegs now you can get your uh, you can get wooden ones and they tend to rot after a while you get plastic ones and they tend to break if you want to support Australian this is a little Australian invention that went on uh, shark tank and I know there's something special about it. Oh, you can hang things and then you can hang other things off the things. And But they're very, very sturdy. And I have only had one uh, be faulty in the whole time I've been travelling. It's a great idea. Uh, these are hooks. You can't have enough hooks. you can got hooks all through the van, everywhere. In fact, I don't understand, but I definitely need a hook on the outside of the van. So I'll probably put one of these. These come with those, that little magic strip so that once it's stuck on wherever it is, then after a year or two years or 25 years, you want to pull it off, you just pull it and there's allegedly no mark on the area you pulled it off with. Uh, toothpicks, just in case you've got a dinner party and someone said, nah, I haven't got a toothpick, have you? Handy to have. This one is a classic. Now, if you can have sauce, barbecue sauce or ketchup sauce, your tomato sauce, there's a great idea because they're not glass, they're not going to smash, they're not steel, they're not going to, you know, bounce around. When you're finished with it, I quite often fill it up with milk or you might want to fill it up with cold water for the kids because they're not drinking enough water or you can put cordial in it and then it's always a bit of a fun thing to do and you keep it in the fridge obviously, bring out your milk, someone says a cup of tea and you say how many squirts, two squirts and you've got the milk in there. I think I mentioned these the other day, they are invaluable, they're called bamboo, um, I don't know, Bam what is it? Bamboo reusable towels <laughs> that's what they're called they come in little squares and now they're fantastic because i use them in the dishcloth all the time they can get a little bit uh 
dirty as you can imagine with all this red dust. I'm going to make a mess here. And you just pull off a little strip. There it is. And you just got one. And you get them wet and you can use them wiping down here and the top of the caravan awning. You name it. And uh, they're very, very hardy. I don't think I've ever ripped one. But they're just handy. And then when you've uh, used them, I always just fold them and put them on the uh, top of the tap in the kitchen. Bamboo reusable towels. They're in a $2 shop. They actually cost uh, $8, but I don't know whether that's normal, but they're in a yeah, $2 shop. Now this again is obvious. They're just um, stackable or, uh, you know, plastic containers for putting And I always, once I've cooked a meal, I always put my stuff into these. Now here's a little tip. If you put your uh, spaghetti bolognese in there and you wash it, and when you, um, once it's washed and dried, if it's still got a stain in it, I'm told that that means that the BPA is no longer protected and you uh, it's no longer BPA uh, free. So there's a little uh, idea. And you can get these from Coles and Woolies. Usually one week Coles will have the uh, one particular brand, Systema on special, and there's another one. They seem, tend to alternate between those, but they're absolutely fantastic. I tend to get a few of the square ones because you think all that stuff is not going to fit in, but generally it'll fit into that. This is a slightly bigger, and this one I keep my um, my uh, USB sticks and all that sort of stuff. That's I real. It's really important. If it's all in one little spot, then I'm feeling a bit more secure. So we ripped through that. Let's get on to another bit. And here we go for another batch. So these are more like uh, personal items. Uh, I'll, start, <laughs> I'll start with the obvious shaving cream. I don't use it very much. Um, some sort of comb or grooming instrument. Nail clippers, you'll be so annoyed if you don't, uh, if you leave home without nail clippers. I guarantee in the first couple of months you'll have gone in and bought some and you may not get the quality you get uh, in the city. So definitely get those. Uh, I would have two, for one person, two toothbrushes and uh, two toothpastes, uh, deodorant, shampoo, hair conditioner, I wouldn't be using baby powder at the moment, because not on my person, because if you don't know, there's a big uh, lawsuit in America. Um, one of the companies is in all sorts of trouble paying a multi-million dollar payout because they said something in the talc powder is actually allegedly carcinogenic. Now, the reason this is good, and it's good to take this, if you put this around the base of all of the things that are actually touching on the ground of the uh, caravan, Allegedly, and I've seen it work pretty well, it stops the ants coming in. So once you get ants in the caravan, it takes ages to get rid of them. So if you sprinkle this around the uh, around the stands, if you've got it, around the tyres, you will have. <laughs> and anything, as I say, that's touching the ground or the jockey wheel, it's supposed to stop the ants coming in. So that'll be a rather wonderful thing. Now this is pretty obvious, uh, what, what you need here. Now you don't need to go in and get a uh, 72 pack for your trip. <laughs> You're not going to be able to carry it for the entire trip. Just, um, I would get probably almost the smallest pack you can get, depending on how many people are travelling. If it's a couple, well, you know your own kind of schedule, as it were. But you really don't need to get this massive pack. I tend to get a, the, pretty much the smallest pack, and it does last me for quite some time. It's nothing... Uh, Nothing against my own personal hygiene, I just don't go through a lot. Depends whether you're a folder or a scruncher. Uh, for when you're doing your washing, it's handy to have that. For your bathroom, I really like this one because it's, it kind of is an aerosol, but it's not. Um, basically, you press it, and as long as you press it, it comes out. So uh, it just gets rid of nasty odours inside the van. This is your old hand towel. Definitely need a hand towel. And uh, they do tend to get a bit dirty, so you might need to wash them fairly regularly. Oh, maybe that's a bloke thing. Maybe I'll just wet my hands and, <laughs> and just clean it on the towel. That's more than likely. Baby wipes. Have two packets of this because uh, it's not the sort of thing you think you go down and get all your groceries and think, OK, I've got blah, blah, blah. And when you run out of baby wipes, you could be in all sorts of mischief. Now, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, a screwdriver, Phillips and a flathead, and have it in the van. Now, the advantage of having it in the van 
is uh, as you saw in one of my videos I accidentally locked myself in the van the only way to get out was having those screwdrivers to actually uh, take some of the door apart and you're definitely not going to be able to get out of it any other way rather than damage one of the windows when you're trying to escape I forgot to mention this before just a uh, medium size uh, rubbish bag but if you buy it at a cheapy dollar shop you tend to find that well I know because I just did this last lot yeah you get a lot and they last a long time but almost the first two things you put in the uh, right at the very top it starts to rip open and eventually if it all rips open you really don't want all that sort of stuff on the floor or falling over yourself so you pay a little bit more and get it at one of the supermarkets and they're a slightly better quality and they'll last a bit longer so that covers about all of that personal stuff <laughs> okay this is a bit of a hodgepodge a couple of things I missed out before I wanted to add in and uh, yeah they have doesn't have a theme anywho let's get on with it okay spare keys spare keys for the uh, caravan make certain you've got the real important ones obviously the one to get in the door the one to open up the uh, water tank one to open up the canister for the toilet and uh, at least have those and I normally put them in the car spare set of car keys well for my car realistically there's only sort of the remote control but I've also got one for the padlocks and I've got the same lock padlocks all around so I hang that on with that and I have a spare set of the car ones in the caravan uh, fire blanket now don't just have it stored away somewhere because uh, in the event you really need it you really need it so I've done as like I said before a little hook hung it on just near the stove there in the kitchen hang that on it it's always there doesn't look particularly pretty but I'd sure be pretty happy to save a life or save the caravan and uh, make certain you've got two of these one for the caravan and one for the car and you may or may not know but they should always be stored that way sounds strange you'd think that the fluid would anyway that's the way you're supposed to say are supposed to store them and also uh, it's not a bad idea to occasionally just test it a little bit to see some stuff comes out because you don't want to be on day one needing it i'll tell you a story that um had a friend working on uh, my old prado and we were wiring up two batteries and when once they were the final connection was just going to be two anderson plugs in there now in the back I had all very organised, I had a brand new one of these from uh, Aldi, good price, all in a box, all beautifully wrapped and everything, on the day that I'd need it. We connected the two Anderson plugs and both made the comment, well, just as well, that looks as though everything's safe, no problems there, and next minute, smoke, flames, and basically all underneath the bonnet was a light. By the time I got out to the back and then got this thing out of the box and so on and so forth, it was <laughs> it was way too late. Fortunately, my friend cut some wires and we got out of that situation. So if you're going to have or do have one of these, do have two of them, make certain they're right ready to go and easily accessible. I mentioned before about storing water. The kids love this. I did a video on uh, this and uh, one of the young tykes said, oh, and he starts walking around. It wasn't whiskey, it was a bottle of wine. It's just water in here and it's great for, um, it's being the square one, but certainly wine bottles, it's great for just refreshing yourself because it's nice and cold. And the kids love drinking out of alcoholic bottles. And, oh, I'm a drunk. <laughs> Probably not the right thing to be showing. Um, this is called Contact Cleaner. Don't ignore the brand. I swear that I'm not sponsored by these people. Contact Cleaner is great for all your electronic components like your Anderson plugs, your uh, trailer plugs. Every now and then give them a little spray, both sides of it, and uh, that'll keep it uh, the electric contacts nice and working well. Uh, get one of these or a couple of these. These are high speed chargers. This particular one's got a USB and a USB-C on it. And they're, as I said, they're high speed. You may or may not know it, but uh, the Samsung and uh, some of the and the iPhones, I think the newer ones, they you can charge them at a higher rate. So you might as well get the uh, best you can out of it. This is really handy to have. It's a single cigarette lighter to two cigarette lighters, a female, and then you can run more appliances. I'm sure I mentioned this before, this is a little power bank, not particularly powerful, but it might get you out of a spot of trouble. I always leave the cable in there because when I need to go back and charge it again, I invariably can't find it. So um, 
and this also you need this cable to go into the phone so yeah definitely have one of those make certain it's fully charged and you can tell you press a little button and all the little lights come on this one now uh, i must admit it's a wireless charger and your plug goes in the back i must admit 90% of the time when I'm lying in bed or whatever or if I'm making dinner I'll put my phone on there and make it a little stand so it's quite handy to have that a little bit expensive for a stand but nonetheless always recommend to have a uh, so if you've got an iPhone have a spare Samsung charger if you've got an Android have a spare iPhone charger the reason being there's bound to be someone at some stage oh my phone's flat and you can do them a favor and loan them your uh, in my case an iPhone charger um, headset really good idea just as a matter of courtesy if you're um whatever you're in the if, if you're in a camp kitchen or whatever oh no this is broken i want to throw it away oh no anyway it's another problem <laughs> another challenge for another day but these are wireless um earpieces and yeah you can pop it over there listen to your music and not be disturbing people so that's pretty handy to have that and oh yeah the muck mat now I know some people say, oh, don't worry about a muck mat, just go to uh, Bunnings and just get the same thing, it's okay, it's not lined and so on and so forth, but I have a feeling that the quality of the muck mat is better than just the cheapy grass thing that you'll get at uh, a hardware sh shop. Yeah, look, they're extremely expensive, but one of the things I figure is this is Australian made, it's an Australian product, it's an Australian invention basically, and we're going through that cycle at the moment. We want to try and encourage Australian businesses, so there's your opportunity. I have my muck mat inside the van rather than outside a lot of people have it on the outside i figure that um you know you probably will have lost a lot of the dust and dirt and everything on your way in you can have other little mats there and then once you get into the actual floor i want uh, to be able to wipe that off there and then so we must be getting pretty close to uh, today's and i still haven't got to 101 i swear i'm going to try my darndest oh yeah the stools so the um so this is one I bought uh, just yesterday. I really like it. When you sit on it, it's just a three prong. When you sit on it, it's very comfortable <laughs> in a comfortable kind of way. The other way, one I've got is um, just one of these little fold up ones. They're good, they're easy to store and they're handy if someone's, oh, a guest comes over and you meet someone, oh, grab a chair. Well, these two now will be very, very handy. The other two I've got, I'll show you just pictures of them. I've got what they call what I call a comfort chair, which I always envisaged being by a river and having plenty of time up my sleeve, which I don't have with the editing. But anywho, that's my issue. Gonna have the big comfort chair, be back there, have the fishing rod out, just fall asleep. Beautiful. So I've got a comfort chair and I've got a function chair. Now the function chair is aluminium, very light, and up pops a table so you can pop your glass of wine or your um, beer there, or you can use also use it as a table. And on the other side, you can store your bits and bobs as well. So we're getting there. Well, there you have it. Part three of a three part series, 101 different things that you probably should think about taking if you're in your caravan, car, and or camper trailer, and you're doing a big trip around Australia. I know it's not the definitive answer, but it's certainly a jolly good start. If you've got any comments, there's lots of things I probably missed out on. Please pop them down the bottom and I'll keep adding it till uh, I might try and make the definitive list. Anywho, if you found the video entertaining, useful and or helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, that would be great if you did. And until next time, this is Paul Will Drive, signing off.